What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to CLEO's Network. Today, we're going to take a look at the top eight deck lists from the Indianapolis Regionals, which occurred on May 7th and 8th, 2022, and had over 1,000 Master Division players. Uh, so the biggest Master's Division event since we've come back from the pandemic. We'll take a look at the top eight deck lists. Uh, Pokestats is updating the number four list, but I have a link for that ready. Uh, so yeah, we'll take a look at these lists and I'll give you guys a little bit of analysis uh, if any of the decks or lists or inclusions were surprises, if they were expected, things like that. Before we get into it though, um, I would like to remind you guys I have a little website, celiosnetwork.com. I am writing free articles on there. I have now... Uh, kind of done away with my Patreon. Um, I just want to get the information out there for free for everybody to read. So I'll be regularly writing an article or two a month over here, and I'll tweet those out when they're available. <clears throat> you can also find any of my, the information you need for my coaching services over there as well. Um, Beast Coast Pokemon, definitely uh, check us out. We create collaborative Pokemon TCG content myself, Chaotic Meatball, James Beck, and Aaron Cybertron Zhang. PokemonCard.io, you can list your own deck lists over here, and they are giving away codes uh, for PTCGO based on popular deck lists, just random deck list uploads. Um, you can share your deck lists and also see the community's deck lists here. I have affiliate links for dragonshield.com in the description based on whether you're in the US or Europe. And if you use those affiliate links to buy things, then I get a small kickback and that helps support my channel. And you can use code CELIO for 5% off on PTCGO codes over at Potown Store. And you can also use code CELIO for 5% off at cardtroopergames.com, uh, especially on pre-orders for Astral Radiance. So why don't we go ahead and get into the top eight deck lists here. We'll start with number eight, Joseph Perez, who played Mew VMAX. Um, okay, so we, we're starting out here with a 3-3 Mew VMAX line, uh, being the kind of unique part of the Pokemon line, the energy lineup for Fusion to Double and a Psychic. Uh, item lineup, we've got four of all the essentials, right down to the switching cards, which is a split of two rope to switch. And honestly, pretty standard across the board. Uh, the only differences between this list and the list I piloted in today to top 128 was that I did not play the Mew VMAX. I played a Pumpkaboo, and then I played a third rope instead of the extra switch. And um, I played a Marnie. So there was, oh yeah, so I uh, dropped two Rodham Phone for Fog Crystal Marnie. So not very different from the list I piloted myself, which I thought was the best Mew list. Um, so very close to what I thought would be optimal for the event. Um, so congrats to Joe for piloting this list to a top eight finish. Mew VMAX, obviously, if not the best deck, then the runner up best deck in format that might be up for debate with all of the Arceus placements recently. Uh, but Mew VMAX, I thought was a great call for getting championship points in this event and could go on to win the event, but the, the individual person that would win with Mew VMAX would just have to be a little luckier than the rest. I thought, um, so that will bring us into talking about, uh, the next movie max list, which had some ways to kind of steer into the variants after we look at the next two Arceus lists. So here we have Francis McDonald's top eight list. Um, they actually were undefeated. You'll see here in the comment section, they talked about their matchups. Um, they were undefeated until they hit Ian Robb, who went on to win the event in top eight. Um, so, uh, playing the kind of toolbox version of Arceus with just a 2-2 Arceus line, the full Sobble and Teleon engine, two Baby Moltres, a Hoopa V, a Zapdos V, a Manaphy, and then the Celebrations Mew for an extra consistency boost. Um, I was actually trying out the Celebrations Mew in my Arceus B-Barrel lists for a little while leading up to the event. Uh, just because Celebrations Mew can get you that energy search or the quick ball or ultra ball that you need uh to either bench an arceus or get an energy attachment for the arceus so i do like that mew inclusion in the list 
Um, a Raihan, of course, for powering up Pokemon or getting an extra energy onto Zapdos under Path of the Peak, or if your opponent's limiting their V Pokemon on the bench, the one of Water Energy, so you can attack with Shady Dealings and Teleon to use Aqua Bullet. Um, overall, a great toolbox list of Arceus, and really impressive that they went undefeated up until uh, they faced the eventual winner in Top 8. Next, we have Pablo Mesa, Tablemon, of course, in case you didn't know Tablemon's real name. Uh, top 8 at Indy with straight Arceus and Teleon. Uh, this was another list that uh, I was very close to. And I love straight Arceus and Teleon with the water energy. So I was uh, I was kind of close to playing something like this myself. I was just very worried about this deck's uh, fragile turn ones. Like you need to bench Arceus and then attach a water and then not get donked by Meloetta. Uh, so those were my concerns. But other than that, I think this deck is absolutely great it's like just an all-around takes 50 50s against the entire meta and then you just have to play better than your opponent or get a little luckier or some combination of the two which tablemon surely did here to make top eight with the list two path to the peak one collapse stadium making sure you have the collapse stadium to bump other path to the peaks in case you need to starburst the manaphy dunsparce combo manaphy for rabbit strike urshifu dunsparce also for urshifu but also pretty important just against the general field of Galarian Zapdos V and like in Rock VMAX and things of that sort. On to the fifth place, also top eight Mu V Max. Now here's where we're getting into what I was talking about, steering into the skid with variants. Um, playing the three Pokemon catcher uh as opposed to the full three count of bosses orders. So, you know, going down a little bit on the boss, just a two to make a little extra room for the three Pokemon catchers, because if Mew has to get lucky to go in from a day two into conversion to converting into a top eight or better, then you might as well just play some extra luck cards. If you don't mind taking that chance for bad luck with the Pokemon catchers, because a Pokemon catcher heads on the same turn that you alesses is pretty deadly um and even just pokemon catchers throughout the game so you don't have to hit that boss's orders and you can alessa or marnie or just not even need to draw into a supporter for turn can be very good if you don't need the pokemon catchers of course you can just cramomatic them away uh they're pretty burnable even without the cramomatics as well so um pretty uh pretty basic list other than the pokemon catchers which is the innovation that uh michael long needed it seems to make it into top eight also uh we'll just look at andrew estrada's list real quick in top four since andrew played the same exact list it's the same picture uh andrew and michael both played the same Mew list with the three pokemon catchers andrew got third and michael got fifth Andrew Weiss in fourth place with Arceus, Inteleon, Dark. Um, like I said, not yet linked on Pokestats, but we're working on getting the link there. Look at that. The link is there. So now we can close that, click this, and it takes us to the same picture. Um, so 4-3 Arceus, Inteleon, all the basic stuff. We got the Hoopa V and Manaphy for the Urshifu. I've heard a lot of people saying that the Manaphys were just useless. But the Hoopa V's got some use because they're not only good against Urshi, they're also good against Mew. Uh, Baby Molt Trace as well. So we got the Dark Package for going into Mew. And yeah, not much else to say really since uh, I think we've seen a lot of lists like this. I will note that this is a straight Arceus with Dark kind of deck because it still has the double Charon's Care for being really good in the mirror matches. Whereas we have lists like Ian Robbs and uh, Francis and McDonald's that were more toolbox lists that did not play the Charon's Care because they were lighter on the Arceus overall. And then we have the finalist list, Isaiah Bradner, piloting Arceus Inteleon with Beedrill. Um, also keeping some of that straight Arceus vibe going with the Charon's Care. And uh, the Palpad and the Marnie and those things. No path to the peak though, using Beedrill and Single Strike Mustard to beat the Mew matchups. 
um, as well as Big Charm on Arceus can get you there sometimes with the Charon's Care as well. Um, so this list, I feel like was unfavored going into Arceus mirrors. Uh, but you know, if you just play better than your opponent, then you'd be fine. If your opponent's attaching too many special energies, if they didn't cut the fourth double turbo, if they're playing capture energies, um, then all of that's going to make them worse against Beedrill and Beedrill was just generally good into the metagame against pretty much everything, but rapid strike Urshifu. You'll notice that they took almost a probable loss to Rapid Strike Urshifu, I'd say, because there's no Mana Fee, there's no Hoopa V, the Beedrill doesn't work if they Rapid Strike Flow, because then there's no special energy left. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, there is a Mana Fee in the list. So yeah, they did not take a probable loss to Urshifu. I did this yesterday when I was looking at their list as well. The Mana Fee is under the finalist badge, um, and I didn't even realize it. I've done that two or three times now while looking at this list. So they did have the Mana Fee for Rapid Strike Urshifu, but again, I think just about every post I've seen and every person I've talked to have been like, yeah, the Mana Fee didn't even matter in whatever list they played Mana Fee in because nobody wanted to play Urshifu to this event. And then finally, we've got Ian the Rob Rob with first place with an Arceus box. A little bit similar to the Arceus box, he and Nick Moff played to top eight and top four finishes in Salt Lake City. This time, however, playing Medicham V with the Yoga Loop uh, to put two damage counters, and then if they knock out with those two damage counters, they'd get an extra turn, a free turn. That can be huge. So between Medicham, Zigzagoon, Quick Shooting, you're able to set up Dunsparces and Mana Fees, and even Sobbles for Yoga Loop turns, uh, potentially unbeknownst to the opponent, since Medicham V has not been a popular inclusion in Arceus as up to this point. I think Medicham V was a card that many people knew had potential in Arceus, just like, um, you know, Evil Tall Celebrations, any of these double energy needing Pokemon because of double turbo energy in Arceus, uh, were candidates to be played in Arceus decks. It's just... When do you pull the trigger on including one of these cards and what uh, what's the metagame you need one of these cards for? And I think Ian found the perfect metagame to be including Metacham V in an Arceus box deck. And obviously it paid off very well. Um, Ian also said that the two energy switches were overperforming, being able to create attackers out of nowhere um, and really just open you up to plays that would otherwise be completely impossible without the energy switches uh so this is a very good list i've already played some games with it last night um i think it really gives you skill expression with all the cards available but it's also very techable for the next event you know if uh there's a card here you think might not be worth it for the next event you can always just swap it out for another card that you think would be good uh, which is kind of the beauty of these Arceus lists that are pretty teched out. So if you'd like to see more of the Day 2 final standings and their lists, we have plenty of that information on Pokestats, ptcgstats.com. So check that out for more of the lists, but just today we were looking at the top 8. Um, I did play Mew VMAX for this event, and I'll probably go over that in a stream or its own video, but... I did think that UV Max could easily make day two and then would need some luck to get into top eight. So three UV Max did make the top eight. Um, Arceus ended up being first and second place. I tested Arceus Beedrill, a list not too, uh, not too different from the list that Isaiah and his group ended on, but I really didn't like the Arceus Mirror match, which is the reason why um, I dropped off of that deck being one of my top choices going into the event. Uh, Ian's list I think is great if you're comfortable with piloting a little bit more of a convoluted Arceus list I think you should start working with this and seeing what cards you want to maybe swap in and out of the list but I think his list was amazing and uh, also don't scoff at Francis McDonald's list because he went undefeated up until seeing Ian in top 8 and then we've also got Pablo Mesa with the straight Arceus and Teleon water uh, list. So if that was a comfort deck of yours, I don't think there's any reason to not be playing it right now. It can beat everything. It's just, uh, it has very fragile and 
pretty exact turns that it needs to hit for things. So um, that's my review of the top eight lists for Indianapolis regionals. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon TCG content, and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.